relationships, marriages, or the lack of children. Something that we're unhappy about. We all have that. Amen. Yes, you may be angry, tired, disappointed, discouraged, disgusted, and frustrated. But you cannot and you must not let go of your dreams. Let go of your desires. Psalms 138 and 8 in the easy to read version says, Lord, I know that you will do what you have promised. Lord, your faithful love will last forever. You are the one who made us. So don't leave us. And Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, Be strong. Be brave. Don't be afraid of those people. Because the Lord your God is with you. He will not fail you or leave you. God loves us so much. He will never leave us or forsake us. God sees us. He hears us. And he knows even our thoughts. He's concerned about our state of mind. He sees us trying to slip into a state of handling it yourself. A little bit of backsliding. You know, backsliding, it doesn't say back jumping. But it's backsliding because you, you do a little bit at a time. And it gets easier and easier. Some of it is a, and I'm going to make this word up, I don't know that it exists anywhere. Do nothing less. I don't want to do nothing. I'm tired of singing. I'm tired of coming to pray. I don't teach no more. I don't, I don't do nothing. That's a state of mind. And I say this that God is concerned. This is the message he gave to me that he is concerned. God needs us 100% in our places and on the wall. Now, I'm not fussing, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm just sharing with you what God shared with me. God gave me a few steps to follow <laughs> to get out of our year-end gloomy slump. The first thing is to make sure that our ways are committed to the Lord. Yes, yes. That we are sold out to Him. Uh -huh. Not wishy-washy. In today and out tomorrow. Make sure we're in for the long haul. Steadfast and unmovable. Secondly, tell God what you want. Be specific, but not so inflexible that you don't allow God to do his thing and bless your socks off. Now, you know, we, he said, what do you mean about well, let's say you you have car trouble and you're whining. I need a new motor. I need some new tires. I need this and I need that. I, I gotta have this night. God ain't doing it. I'm mad. How many times have 
like God told you to go down to the car lot and lay your hands on your vehicle. So while we're whining and complaining about what is not being done, God is trying to bless you with his best. But we're not trusting him. And he's not going to force it on us. But hang in there. Hold on. Trust God. He's going to do what he promised to do. My second example of that is some of our young women that are waiting on their husbands. And of course they've made their list. And some of them are saying, well, he's got to be six feet and drive a fine car. Okay. Well, God is sitting there saying, well, I got my boy over here and he's been obeying me. He's been doing what I asked him to do. I know he loves me. He, he, he comes to, I, I've been training him how to be a husband. Uh -huh. He's doing all the right things. Right. I've put him in your path twice. Mm. Yeah. And you don't connect with him. I guess it's because he, now, now he has money, he is a millionaire. Mm. He's doing all the right things, but he just likes to drive his old truck. Oh my God. And he's only 5'10". Oh. So every time I put him in your path, you ignore him. So I guess you're just not ready yet. We'll move on. We'll come back to you later. Don't miss your blessing. Being so specific and so stringent that God cannot do for you what he wants to do, what he's prepared to do for you. The next four steps, and I know you say four, they're, they're short. I want you to go back in your childhood when your children were growing up and you were trying to teach them how to cross the street. Or if you don't have children, you can remember when your parents were teaching you how to cross, cross the street. And this is how the Lord gave it to me. What's the first thing your mom and dad did when you got ready to cross the street? That's right. Hold my hand. Don't let go of my hand. Remember how tight your parents would hold on to your hand. Yeah. Even when that boy back there, man, was squirming and moving and trying to get out. We couldn't let go of his hand because of the dangers that were in the street. That is what God is saying to us. I've got your hand and I can't let go. He will not let go. Whatever we do, let us not let go of his hand. Because God is going to continue to have ours. All right? Feel the parents' hand. You got it? They got it? They're holding on to you? What's the next thing as you step up to the curb? What did they say? Stop right here. Stop. I got you. But stop. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop rehearsing your problems. God knows what they are. You don't have to speak your complaint day and night. You don't have to wear your complaint on your face. People ask you how you are. I'm tired. 
I'm sick. I'm broke. I'm this. I'm that. If you cannot say anything else, when people ask you how you are, you know, that's all right. I'm not saying you don't tell people when you're sick or when you're hurting or when you need something. You just don't have to do it 24 7. If people ask you how you are, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God is good. You may be hurting. You may be broken. But stop whining. Stop coveting other folks' blessings. You got to have what they have. You don't know their story. You don't know what it took for them to get what they have. You don't know what it took for them to keep what they have. You have dreams, you have desires, and it's all right to admire something from a distance. But you do not have to have what everyone else has. Amen. Stick to your own hopes and your own dreams. Yes. The parent still has your hand tightly. They say stop. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what the next one is? Look both ways. Look both ways. Yeah. Yes. Look both ways. And in our case, we're going to look all of the ways. Amen. God is a blessing. Yes. Look for it. Yes. You can't see it because you have tunnel vision yes. and focus on your problem. Yes. Look past your problem. Yes. Look outside what you know and what you see. My daddy used to say, you look through muddy waters and see dry land. I didn't understand that, did I? but I do now. We look past our problems. We look past what's going on, and we see God's glory. We ask him for bus fare. God's trying to give us a new car. You look both ways. Hallelujah. Take the limits off of God. Take your restrictions off of God. Let him out of the box so he can bless you. I couldn't remember whether this last, this, this fourth one was my add on or whether my parents really said it. But it's listen. So you can hear a car coming before you can see it. God is speaking. We're not listening. If what we hear doesn't agree with what we want, then we say we can't hear from God. God says, don't go by that car. And we say, I know that wasn't God because he knows I want a Mercedes. I always want a Mercedes. I'm going to get that Mercedes. Y'all get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes, the don't or the no is temporary. Because God has a better deal or a better plan for you. Because he always, always has us on his mind. You can let your parents in go now. We're coming back to the present. We have to thank God. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. I almost told Minister John, stop! You made my message! Stop! Amen. However bad you think your 
situation is, there is some.